Okay, YouTube, in this video we're going to be discussing conditional probabilities, but specifically doing so with a tree diagram for a very, very common problem that is very often seen on uh, some major exams. So uh, let's go ahead and start by taking a look at what we have here. Um, and starting with this, we say conditional probabilities. Now, uh, we just got done in the last video talking about multiplication rules. And multiplication rules starting with that, uh, we say is probability of an event A occurring and then an event B occurring in right afterwards, okay, in sequence. So we say probability uh, A and B is equal to probability of the first thing times probability of the second thing. It's just that given that the first thing already happens. And so this right here, this, this portion of it, we refer to this, sorry, this back portion of it is, is a conditional probability because it is contingent upon the fact that A already happened. Okay, B happening given that A already happened. So one, um, one nifty way of doing this with the tree diagram. So let's read our, our situation here. We say box one. Okay, let's try to wrap your head around this. Box number one, we have two boxes, contains two red balls, one blue ball. So we say here's, you know, we could, I like to see things. Box number one, uh, two red, one blue. So we say red, two, blue, one, total of three. And we say, okay, so box number two, box number two, um, it's split up like this. It's three blue and one red. So we'd say like a quarter of it is red. We say red, there's one of these guys. And then blue, three for a grand total of four. So we have these two different boxes with these marbles in it. <clears throat> it says, okay, uh, now we're going to flip a coin. We say if the coin lands on heads, we're going to choose box number one. If the coin lands on tails, then we're going to choose box number two. But the question is, is find the theoretical probability that we select a red ball. Okay. So what you have to recognize is this. We have red balls both in our uh, first box and in our second box. Okay. And we can see the proportion to which each box is red. But the question is, is uh, you know, likelihood of getting a red. So the weird thing is we have to actually write this uh, out in an interesting fashion, but we can acknowledge this. Whatever box we choose, box number one or box number two, it's contingent upon us actually flipping heads in the first place. So we say uh, probability of getting a red, one way to do this, let's switch colors here, probability of, of getting a heads first and then thus choosing box number one and then getting a red, so we say and red, or probability we flip a tails on the first one in which we go with box number two and then immediately follow that up with a red. So using our rules of addition and multiplication we can start rewriting this. We say well and means times probability of, of heads choosing box number one and then probability of getting a red given that we got a heads on the coin. Or means plus so probability of now and meaning times on this part of it here we say probability of tails times the probability of the second thing, which was red, given that tails had already occurred. So now, we can actually evaluate these in a rather easy fashion. When we talk about a tree diagram, we're talking about a set of iterations of events, like something happens and then something else happens and something else happens. Um, but they all started the prime event, which is this singularity right here. We say event zero, uh, so at inception. And then we say, okay, so our first event is going to uh, have a number of branches that come out to be it. And in this first event, we say event number one, we'll call this E1 here. We'll refer to this as getting a heads or a tails. And so you should always put the outcome at the end of the branch. We say heads or tails are the only two outcomes. So now depending upon heads, which was box number one, if we want to list that there, or tails, which represented box number two, then we drew from these boxes, we said the possible outcomes after opening the box, either getting a red or a blue, okay? So we say up here, red, or blue, okay? And this is event number two, this entire column right here. So really, you know, we're looking at this and uh, we need to find the probability of either getting uh, a probability heads and a red or tails into red. But when you're using a tree diagram, a couple things. First of all, we want all the outcomes in this instance that lead us to red, red. So I'm gonna circle from the main branch out to the reds here. We're gonna follow the path that takes us to a red? What sequence of events takes us to red? So we have these two sequences of events, but what we want to do is add their, add their likelihoods together. So we're going to have to find some likelihoods. Start with this, event number one, we said heads or tails, what was the likelihood of each occurring? So I'm going to switch colors on us here, we go over to like a yellowish. Uh, the likelihood of getting a heads, so we say probability of heads on this branch was 0.5. 
50% chance. Most of the time, you just write the probability on there, uh, 0.5. You could also write a half, you got a 1 and 2 probability of each of these things occurring. So we say, once we get to, say, box number 1, what was the likelihood we get red? Well, we drew box number 1 up here in the sample space, and we said red was 2 out of 3. So we say 2 out of 3 uh, chance uh, of getting a red, and then the other 1 out of 3 of getting a blue. And then the box number 2, which was if we flipped the tails, we say, what's the likelihood we get a red? Well, there's one red out of four total. So this is a one in four chance. Let's write that down. One in four chance. And this is a three in four chance down here. So the way this works is, we say we want probability of heads and red, given that we had flipped a heads. So that's the first branch here. We say probability heads is a half. A half. Times probability that we get a red, given that heads was flipped and that was two out of three on the first box. Plus, probability of tails now was a half, times probability red, given that we flipped the tails. So flip the tails means we were in box number two, and getting a red down here was one and four. So we can calculate this, but essentially what we're doing is this. You multiply out the whole branch. So we say 0.5 times 2 thirds uh, is 1 third. So you get 0.33 repeating when you multiply out all the probabilities on this branch. When we multiply out all the probabilities on this branch here, we say 1 fourth times 0.5, we get 0 0.125. And so we can add these two together because they both give us red. Uh, and so that would be the same thing up here. We say 1 third plus uh, 1 eighth. Okay. So 1 third plus 1 eighth. And turns out as a decimal, we get 0.455, or about a 45.5% chance of this occurring. And as a fraction, it would be 1 24th, or uh, 11 24th. Sorry. Okay, cheers.